Folks, I am here to help you guys get an understanding of the Cleveland market unlike anyone else, right? If you are investing in Cleveland real estate, your number one resource is here on Holton Wise TV. And today, we're going to be talking about this deal, okay? This property is owned by my client. He's an investor from Spain. Purchased this from another uh, seller company, et cetera, et cetera. And he is having a heck of a time. He is losing quite a bit of money. And he has asked me uh, to provide him the best step forward so he can turn around his investment. And I'm going to do just that right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. And as mentioned, this is the property. And I'm going to try to turn it around for my client, right? Here's the situation. My man, Miriam. You're an investor from Spain, and you reached out to me, right? You got some issues, okay? You purchased this property. It's a duplex. The address is a 1375 East 89th, Cleveland, Ohio, 44106. It was originally a duplex, okay? Uh, at some point, somebody, for, the, for some horrible reason, decided to just, like, somehow convert this big two-family duplex uh, into... A single family home. So you bought it for thirty two thousand uh, dollars. Thirty two. What was it? Thirty two thousand nine hundred dollars. OK, that's your property. So it's a duplex. Uh, you bought it for thirty two nine. You have a tenant in there. They're paying like six forty five and you're losing money. Right. The property's not in great condition. You're not making money every single month. On top of that, you haven't even gone through the process of the Cleveland lead-based paint certifications that are brand new, okay? And uh, you're trying to figure out what to do with this thing. When you bought it, you thought you are going to make a bunch of money, and that's just not happening, and you're trying to figure out what to do, right? So you're like, hey, man, what do I do? I haven't done this lead stuff yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a lot of lead violations. I'm not cash flowing right now. Should I spend the money converting this thing back into a duplex what would you do, James? I want to buy some properties in Cleveland, but my first deal here in Cleveland is not making any sense. What's the move, right? That's what you want to know, Miriam. And that's, those are all great questions, and I'm glad you hooked up with me, and I'm glad you reached out to me. Uh, what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to do anything to this property other than cut bait. Boop, 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 boop. It's time to sell this thing, bro. This is not gonna go the way you want it to go okay uh you're first of all converting it back to a multifamily property that would be throwing bad money after good you can't do that you see uh this property is in like one of the worst neighborhoods in america okay like right across the street right you see boarded up windows nobody's taking care of the grass like if we pull it back to the map all right let's see if i can't pull that bad boy back up to the map uh-oh Lost my internet there. Let me pull this thing back up to the map. Here's when somebody bought it. This is an 04 when somebody bought it. They paid 14 for the thing. Let me pull you back up here, bro. All right. You are in a neighborhood in Cleveland that is one of the most distressed neighborhoods in the entire city of Cleveland. In fact, it's probably one of the most distressed neighborhoods in the United States of America. Now, this is your house that you bought for 32.9 thinking about converting it to a duplex i mean to get it back to a duplex like what are we looking at probably 30 40k on top of that based on like the neighborhood the inspection report that you showed me about the property when you got it i mean dude you're looking at another 30 i mean, dude, you might be looking at like 50 60 thousand dollars to go back to a duplex and get this thing uh, passing all your lead certifications if you're paying a third-party property manager. I will go over the comps here shortly, but you would be way underwater because this is just a neighborhood where the ARVs of all these properties, it's so, so low because it's so blighted and there's so much crime that you see a lot of teardowns, right? You see all these teardowns right here? Okay, that's when the value, the ARV of the property 
is lower than the amount of money it would cost to actually sell the property. And then people just walk away from it and then the city tears it down, right? You could buy these lots for a dollar. So where your house is, if you go up the street here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and I'm sure there's another one, right? I just counted up 100 of them. That's 100 houses uh, just in the, like, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or streets, rather. One, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, seven streets. Just in the seven streets, one block radius of your property. Hundred houses got to the point where they were dilapidated. It would cost more to fix them uh, than they would actually be worth, right? And you do that by also reading your comps, right? So if we go here, I pulled up the comps. Now, you take a super populated neighborhood like that where there's just a ton of houses, or there used to be, rather, a ton of houses. Uh, the way you do comps is you look at similar property over a quarter-mile radius, okay? And to do that, you do it over the last six months. When I do that in Cleveland, in, like, C-grade neighborhoods, right, you typically are going to see uh, about 20, 30, 40 sales, okay? Well, this area is so distressed and dilapidated, I was only able to pull six comps for you over the last five years. And they sold for... A duplex, 7,700. A duplex, 8,500. A duplex, 9,000. Okay? Another duplex, 27, 27, and 30. Right? These are your comps. So, you already paid 32,9. It would make no sense for you to drop, like, another 40, 50, 60K into this to get it lead certified and to convert it back to a duplex. Because at that point, you're all in for, like, 100 but our comps here, at most, are a third of that, right? So you'd essentially be setting that 60 grand on fire. Uh, so the only thing for you to do here, because you're already losing money, is to just cut bait and move out. You made a bad investment, and you overpaid for the property, right? Uh, you buying it at 32.9. Uh, it's very unlikely you're going to sell it at 32.9, because what you've also found out is when you're in one of these areas where it's incredibly tough and difficult and the level of crime is high and collecting rent is iffy at best, uh, you can't really cash flow on a property that only brings in like $645 a month in rent. It's just not possible, right? Your, your fixed expenses, your taxes, your insurance, your property management fee to whoever you have managing it, because again, you're out of the country, right? Your maintenance, too high right, to actually make a spread. Then you got your variable expenses, right? You got your water, you got uh, vacancy, and there's a ton of vacancy in these neighborhoods. You got your tenant damage, right? So your repairs, your CapEx, your roofs. Like the whole thing, it's just getting worse. So any dollar you spent trying to right this ship is it, just throwing bad money after good. So your best bet is to just liquidate this as is. I would say we start things off at twenty-five grand. And see what happens. Uh, the target buyer, and this would be something I could sell for you, the target buyer would be somebody local, right? You get some local investors who have some sweat equity. Uh, sometimes they can make a profit on these, right? I mean, I shouldn't say sometimes. They can often, but it takes like a real seasoned hardcore landlord that has sweat equity built in. Like, for example, um, you take a general contractor. A general contractor could go in and convert this property himself, or with his own hourly crew at a much cheaper price point than you ever could being in Spain, having to hire a third party management and construction company here in the U S who's willing to work in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the United States of America, right? Like the numbers just are not going to pan out for you to really ever make money on this investment, right? You've already lost money. You lost money the day you bought the investment, unfortunately, and it's just never going to get better. So any dollar that you can extract out of this investment should be considered a positive. Like I know investors a lot of times are like, well, I bought it for 32.9. If I can't sell it for 32.9, I'm going to hold on to it till I can. 
that's not how this is going to go, bro. Like, so far you've lost X amount of money. Every day you own this property, just tack on more money to that, right? So any money you get out of this sucker is a positive because these are the kind of properties that get to the point where they're worth zero and you just walk away and you might lose all your money. A la the 100 vacant lots I just showed you in that 7th Street radius. So get out while you can, and we'll probably find you a local handyman, a local contractor, who's able to go in with a cash offer, pick it up, no mortgage, and they could do that work themselves. They don't have to pay a property manager. They don't have to pay a general contractor. They don't have to do this or that. And they really understand these neighborhoods, and they could watch these properties like a friggin' hawk, right? Those are the only things that they make sense for. Doesn't make sense to you, and I want want to see you get out now as fast as you can. Do not spend any more money on this thing. Do not, under any circumstances, drop another 40K trying to reconvert this thing back to a duplex. First of all, whoever converted it from a duplex to a single family in the first place is an idiot. Don't follow their lead. So, Miriam, for you, the best move, you got to cut bait, right? You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. Here it's time. Fold. Wave the white flag. Get as much money out of this investment as humanly possible. Again, I will help you sell it. I'll sell it on the Investment Properties for Sale show. And then we will take that money that you've got, and I will then find you some investment properties that I feel will be more appropriate uh, from a financial and risk perspective for you in your investment career. This, this loss right here does not mean you can't be a good real estate investor. It does not mean you do not have what it takes to invest in real estate. It doesn't mean you can't make money in the Cleveland market. It means you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. I would be lying if I told you guys every single real estate deal I ever did, I made money on. That's not how this works, folks. Anybody who's done a reasonable amount of deals, a reasonable amount of investing, has taken their losses. It's not about having a perfect record, folks. It's about having your wins outweigh your losses and minimizing your losses when they occur right so this one bad deal you made a mistake it's okay you learn for it we're going to get that money out of this property liquidate this sucker and move on and find you something better thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment